Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about mini bags. I am discussing my best and my worst mini bag purchases ever. So I've looked through my entire bag collection and not just the bags I currently own, but mini bags that I have ever purchased. And I pinpointed the bag purchases which I think are my best ones in terms of that mini category, as well as my worst mini bag purchases. I've tried to cover this from every single price point. Because I also looked at bags I don't still own, I will insert photos, but I don't have the bag here. I hope you guys enjoy this and let's go ahead and get started. So first up for my least expensive bag is my Tory Burch crossbody and this was actually a Nordstrom anniversary sale purchase. I think I got this two years ago and it's so great. It's such a great style and this one is more representative because Tory Burch do a whole ton of these kind of bags. You know, you can always find a version of this even if this exact one isn't available. Um, I do think that the n one differs slightly to the regular one. I think the regular one you can detach the chain so I guess that kind of accounts for the price difference. But either way, I think these are fantastic. I'm not always a fan of the Tory Burch Safiano leather but the pebbled leather I think is fantastic and is very reminiscent for me of mulberry leather, which is obviously available at a much higher price point. And I just think these are great value for the money, especially if you can get them on sale. And I would always say that it is possible to get Tory Burch at a discount. So if you can, you would definitely hold out. But I've been really happy with mine. And I think this is a really nice option. If you did want something really versatile, I love this chain and leather strap option. It does mean that it's just a little bit dressier so you can use it for evening as well. It's very, very fuss free. You don't have to baby it too much. I've spilt things on this and it does just wipe clean. And for the money, I just think it's a really, really nice option. Also really good for travel as well. It's very roomy, you can fit in plenty of items. And I just think this is a great one. So I always love Tory Burch. I think they do some fantastic styles. And for the money, I don't think you do better than this. Next up is my Senrev Aria and I love this bag so much. I have two of these now and they are the best little crossbodies, especially if you really like being hands-free and you don't wanna worry about your bags. This has been one of my most used bags this winter and particularly now that you know we're obviously all using hand sanitizer a lot and I have seen horror stories of people getting hand sanitizer on their Chanel bags and just ruining the leather and it's just terrified me. So I've really been gravitating towards bags where I don't have to worry about them. And this just absolutely fits the bill. I love the color. It is the prettiest, loveliest warm brown. Such a great shade if you do wear a lot of warm tones. It goes beautifully with camel and brown coats. I think the overall look is adorable, especially with the chain as well. I tend to only use it as a clutch or a crossbody. You obviously have the belt bag option as well if you wanted to use it like that. It fits a decent amount. I love the pop of color lining as well. I think it's so, so beautiful. And this is just such a great style for me. I love it to bits and I love the fact as well that I do think it looks beautiful but you don't have to worry about you know wiping it down and ruining the leather or anything like that. It's very good quality and it's also super resilient as well. Speaking of resilient bags, my Saint Laurent wristlet. I love this thing and I was debating what Saint Laurent style to kind of include in this video. I really kind of thought through which one I genuinely think is the best value for money and categorically the best for me. Um, there's obviously the Uptown Clutch, which I love. There's the wallet on chain. But in terms of kind of ticking all the boxes and actually being still quite good value for money, I think this one is actually the winner, which is one of their newest styles. This is the wristlet. So it only comes with that leather wristlet. I have attached a chain though, and I think it still works really good as crossbody if you wanted to wear it like that. But for the price, and I think this is still 545 in the UK, I will find the USD price and pop that on screen. I think this is still one of Saint Laurent's best value options. And I don't think you're compromising on quality or style at all. You can feel a weight difference when you compare this to the wallet on chain, which retails closer to a thousand. But I don't think when you feel this individually, you think it's bad quality. You know, there is a weight difference, which largely comes from the weight of the chain. But in terms of the actual leather, I really don't get the impression that you're getting inferior leather. I don't think you're getting a worse finish. And I think it's an absolutely beautiful style, which also looks very, very classic as well. I know they just released this in the white and I just placed my order for that one. I just think these are 
so so great really functional as well they are a little bit taller and that does make a difference in terms of how much you can fit inside it's not a large bag by any means so this is definitely a slimline one it can fit more than the uptown clutch though and overall i just think this is a great option so if you did want something that was still very very luxurious but you didn't want to be spending you know a thousand plus i do think this is a fantastic option next up is my gucci wallet on chain and i still absolutely love this bag and i think a lot of wallet on chains are quite similar you know there isn't a huge amount of difference between them you're really just buying into the design and also the brand and the logo um but i do think that the gucci wallet on chain kind of stands apart a little bit partly because I think it's priced better than a lot of its competitors but also I think little touches to the design actually mean that it's just that little bit more functional. I love the look and it is quite minimal you know there isn't anything overly flashy you have the Gucci logo right there um, but again it's not kind of super super in your face and then it opens up and what I really love about it is the mirror. I've said before how much I love this but it really is useful especially when you are going out to dinner and you're fed confident that there's nothing in your teeth but you just want to do a little check but you're not so worried that you actually want to make an extra trip to the bathroom this is just ideal and I always mean to carry a mirror with me but I rarely remember to do it so just having this mirror option in the kind of flap is just fantastic so I love that it's also a smidge wider than some other wall on chain options which means you can fit a few more things in love the fact that the chain is detachable as well so you can use it as a crossbody but you can also have it as a clutch if you wanted to plenty of compartments so there is a front pocket there's a zip pocket and then also card slots as well and overall i just think this is a great buy and again it's not so crazy expensive that it's over the thousand pound mark still definitely a luxury purchase but one that i just think was very very well thought out and just a really great little design Unfortunately, they don't seem to do the pink one anymore, but I did see the black one is still available and I just love mine. So would highly recommend. I do think this is a great one. Next up is my Chloe Marcy and I've really grown to love this bag over the course of this year. It's fantastic and I've always had a bit of a soft spot for it. I don't buy a lot of Chloe because I do find that their bags date sooner than most, but I do think that the Mini Marcy is a little bit of a classic. It's been around for many, many years and I know it's not the most super fashionable and trendy bag, but I think it's had decent staying power and I think it's adorable. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but for me, the Mini Marcy kind of reminds me of a time when people weren't quite so particular about their bags. You know, the leather is very smushy. It's not a perfect bag at all. It has kind of raw seams and again, it's just a smushier, softer kind of leather, which absolutely shows wrinkles. And you know, these were there when I got it. So this isn't a case of it wearing badly. You know, the bag is just very much designed like this, but I think that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, it's a very, very carefree bag. It's very easy going. It's just easy French elegance, I think. And I just love this. I got mine in the kind of tan brown color. You can get so many beautiful shades. You get the gray, the pink, they do a beautiful blue. So whatever kind of color you like, they will probably have an option for you. It's very easy to wear as well. Can fit a decent amount. And again, it's just so easy going and lovely to wear. So a really comfortable bag, fairly good staying power as well. And I've just been totally won over by the Mini Marcy. Next up is a bag which I don't actually have here and this is the only bag that's made it into my best of category which I don't still currently own. I did sell this on but me selling it on really isn't a comment on the functionality of the bag because I still think it is completely great and fantastic and I'd recommend it to anyone. So it is the Celine Nano. I did part ways with this I think a couple of months ago and this one was one that I really kind of thought about because I think it's great. It is a mini bag, but it fits an absolute ton. It is kind of a proper Mary Poppins bag. You can just fit so many items in there, but it still kind of feels and looks like a mini bag. Very comfortable to wear, very durable as well. And I just think it's great. The only reason why I sold it is because I hadn't got a lot of use out of it. And I just have so many bags that I do have to be pretty brutal now in terms of what I keep and what I get rid of. And if I haven't used it recently, it's just got to go to to a better home but I still think it's great and if you are considering it I would absolutely still recommend it I think it's lovely I'm eyeing up a different style from Celine as we speak and 
I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful option if you are after a mini bag that still holds an absolute ton. And then finally for my last bag of this category and my most expensive one, it is the Chanel Mini, which probably won't come as a surprise to anyone, but I still think this is a fantastic bag. For me, this is the mini bag that started it all. I love it. I don't use this one as much anymore, but that's mainly because I know how difficult they are to find. So I'm always just a little bit scared when I take it out because I know I just can't replace it. Or if I tried, it'd be very, very difficult. I feel lucky to have gotten mine when I did. I got it for a great price and it's lasted incredibly well. I have used this a ton. It's been out in the sun. It's been traveled with. It's just kind of been through it all and it still looks pretty much good as new. Regardless of whether you kind of get the square one or a rectangle one though I do think these are beautiful great options I'd say they're slightly less good than they used to be and I'd always used to recommend the mini because I thought it was the better value option from Chanel but they keep on raising the price of the mini and so there is a difference between this and the small flat but it's getting smaller and smaller every year I feel like they are disproportionately raising the price of these Chanel minis probably to keep up with the demand because they are such a popular style. Um, but I wouldn't quite say it's as great value as I used to, um, but I do still think it is a lovely, really versatile style, which is still pretty functional as well. And then finally, I have my worst mini bag purchases ever. And thankfully, this list is a lot shorter than my best of category. I would say that there are a lot of bags which I own and I have owned in the past, which don't fit in either category. You know, I don't consider them my best ever purchases. Similarly, I don't consider them to be so awful that they make my worst of category. The bags that made this list are basically, they kind of failed in one or more ways. I always have kind of four criteria in terms of how I judge any bag really. Number one is it has to look nice, you know, as much as I want my bags to be functional, I also want it to look really good as well. Two, it has to be comfortable to wear. Three, it has to be fairly durable. You know, I don't want to be constantly freaking out and worrying about my bag. And then four, it also has to fit a decent amount as well. You know, I understand that these are small mini bags, but I still want to be able to fit in my essentials. So the bags on this list basically made the cut because they didn't make it on one or more of those categories. So all of these bags I don't currently have still with me. I have sold all of these on because I just didn't get along with them and they weren't suitable for me. Number one, I'm going in price order again, my Prada camera bag. And I do think that this absolutely took the box in terms of looking adorable but it failed in two ways for me. One, it wasn't very durable, and this is a weird one because I know Safiano Leather has a reputation for being very durable, but for me, it's kind of hit and miss. On some bags, I have found the Safiano Leather to be fantastic, really hard wearing, really fuss free, and just a very, very durable, hard wearing leather. But on this camera bag, it just didn't really seem to translate and it was particularly noticeable on the piping where I could see a lot of wear after only a couple of uses. So as much as I did really like the style, I got it in this adorable pink shade. I knew that if I was going to continue to wear it, it was just gonna get worse and worse in terms of the wear and tear. And it also was very, very tiny. I could just about fit in my phone, card holder, maybe some sunglasses if I was lucky, but it was a pretty miniature bag and those things considered, it just didn't really work out for me. So definitely a cute one, but not very durable or very large. Next up is my Saint Laurent Uptown bag. And I think this one mainly makes the cut as well because I don't think it's very good value for money. Saint Laurent now have a whole ton of wallet on chain styles and bags around that kind of size. This one is adorable, but it was quite a bit more money than the Uptown clutch, which was very good value for money. And now they've kind of upped the price, but I still think in the realms of luxury bags, it still represents fairly good value for money. Um, but the Uptown bag is quite a bit more. And oh my goodness, it's tiny. Like I really wanted it as an evening bag. I thought it was great. I was swayed by the extra card holder that you get with it, which I absolutely should not have been, but I totally was. But it was so small. I could fit in my phone some cards and that was it. I couldn't fit in my keys. I couldn't fit in a lipstick and it was just too tiny for me to make work. You know, I'm okay with small bags. I can really pare down my essentials if I need to, but I at least need to be able to fit in my keys along with my phone. And it was just a no-go for that reason. So 
Second one do a lot of great styles. I'm a fan of a lot of their bags, but this one just didn't work out for me. My next one is also from Saint Laurent and it is the small Lou camera bag. And I'd say this one is a little bit more of a mixed bag um, just because I have realized that I personally don't love camera bags on me. I think it's a really nice option if you are just starting out your bag collection and you want something really versatile. But when you do already have a few bags, I just have other bags that I prefer to reach for rather than a camera bag. So I would say that, um, but even with that knowledge, I do think that the small Lou from Saint Laurent could do with just being a little bit bigger. It is a very, very mini bag and you can fit in, you know, your phone and your cards and that sort of thing, but you really have to pack it very tightly and there isn't a whole lot of maneuvering room, which is also really important if you want something that's really easy to access. I did love the look of it though. I thought the whole vintage vibe was beautiful. I think it's a great looking bag, but I do think it could do with being just a little bit larger. And then finally for the very last bag in this video and the most expensive one on this worst of list, it is the Mini Lady Dior. This one is such a stunning bag. I still think it is ridiculously beautiful. Didn't last very long in my collection. I did sell this a couple of months ago. And for me, it just wasn't there with the functionality. And I'm really trying to get a lot more strict about selling on things which I may love to look at and I may think are beautiful bags, but which I just don't get enough use out of. And this one was not only very, very tiny, not very easy to access because of that top flap, but also the most delicate bag ever. And I have lambskin, you know, I have lambskin Chanel flaps. I am not kind of unfamiliar with the material, but the Dior lambskin is really, really delicate. It dents very easily. And I was just kind of on edge around the bag at all times. So even though I love the look of it, I still love the look of it. I think it's stunning. I just knew it wasn't one that I was going to get a lot of use out of. And especially considering the cost, you know, I really want it to tick all those boxes. I want it to look beautiful, but I also want it to be functional and hard wearing and comfortable as well. And this one just didn't quite make it for me. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what your best and your worst mini bags ever are down below. I would love to hear about it. Let me know if you have the same experience as me, if you disagree with me, if you have completely other bags on your list, let me know. I'm sure other people would love to read it as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.